challenges for the humanity and will be delivered by Professor Ricardo Petrella on Skype. This lecture will also be chaired by Professor This lecture will be chaired by Professor Giulio Boltvinik. Can I request you to please come on stage? Giulio Boltvinik is a researcher and professor at El Colegio de Mexico since 1992. He's an economist and social scientist. His research interests include poverty, social policy, and human flourishing, adopting a transdisciplinary approach. In the last 15 years, he broadened his look moving from economic poverty well-being to human poverty, human flourishing. To this, he went back to Marx, especially to the economic and philosophical manuscripts. I request the chair to now take over the proceedings. I think we'll take another minute to connect. Ricardo Petrella studied political science and economics at the University of Florence, Italy. He's a professor emeritus at the Catholic University of Lubain on la mondalización de la economía. He was also a professor at the Flemish Free University, Brussels, on the European integration. He holds the degree of doctor honoris causa from eight universities. In 1975, he became the director of the European Coordinator Center on Social and Economic Research in Vienna. In 1979-94, he assumed the charge of director of the FAST program, forecasting and assessment in science and technology at the Commission of the European Communities, Brussels. Petrella is also the founder promoter of European Interuniversity Network on SESST, Education on Society, Science and Technology. His books include Limits to Competition, Le Bien Commune, The Water Manifesto, Il Diritto di Sognare, O Nom de l'Humanité. Okay, Dr. Petrella, if you can start your lecture, go ahead. Pronto? Ci sente, Professor Petrella? Go ahead, Dr. Petrella. We're yes. waiting for you. Yes, good afternoon. Are you hearing me? Okay, okay. Many thanks for your availability to organize these uh, uh, Skype, uh, uh, Skype intervention. I'm sorry for the visa issues, but let's go now to the, our, uh, uh, our conversation, our talk. Well, my, my, my points are the following. First, I would like to uh, raise the question why uh, common goods have emerged again in the social, economic, and political agenda at local and global level these last years. The second point will be to try to see what was the place of common good in Marx's thought, and as well what has been the changes in the current uh, uh, last 10 years in the Marxist and, uh, Mar and communist milieu with regard to the common goods. Third, I shall therefore try to see uh, that maybe our most important problem as Marxist-oriented people, as researchers, as, as uh, practitioners, uh, is uh, to fight against the banalization of the concept of a common good, a banalization which leads uh, to the uh, loss of any relevant political value of the common goods as uh, a driving forces in design the transformation of our societies. And finally, I shall try to make some proposals. I hope that I've been uh, clear about these points. First point, why common goods are again a very important issue in the political agenda. 
and debates and analysis. I think that the most important factor is the fact that people are reacting against the current processes dominated by a commodification of any form of life. Everything has been commodified. And this commodified commodification means that people also do not accept the marketization of all forms of life that is essential uh, to uh, life of not only human beings, but as well as of all the living species on the earth. Commodification and marketization has been, have been expressed in a very powerful form, which is the monetarization. That means that we must give a price to nature, we must give a price to water, we must give price to seeds, we must give price to knowledge, we must be price to friendships, to arts, etc., etc. Altogether, commodification, marketization, and monetarization has led to the awareness spread everywhere uh, that uh, we have no longer any right to life. Not only we, but also uh, the uh, living species. Usually we have always considered that we have the right to water. And the last years we tried to say, but it, there, are, there is also the right of water to life. Under present conditions of commodification, marketization, and monetization, there is no right of anybody or any uh, living species. And therefore we lose the culture and the practice of uh, the rights to and of life. This has led uh, to the privatization of everything. Privatization of uh, uh, material and material resources, pri privatization of uh, natural and artificial resources. Everything has been privatized under the principle that only appropriation may lead uh, to rational and sustainable use of the resources. The privatization means that uh, uh, we have also the privatization of political power. And uh, this is shown very uh, uh, strongly by the fact that local collectivities have lost any power of control on their resources, included local resources, but are just uh, at players, uh, stakeholders, those who have an interest, those who can appropriate uh, the resources in order to satisfy the needs and to increase the power of uh, decision. The privatization has led finally to the financialization. Financialization means that the value of anything has been shifted towards uh, the uh, financial parameter. And these financial parameters or indicators today are very, are very uh, 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 speculative in the sense that they are aleatory, that they are uh, uh, values that are determined now 30% of the tra financial transactions in the world are at the millions of seconds. It means that there is no an, any longer any human time, there is no longer any stability, any long term, nothing. I guess that, and I close this point, uh, the uh, people have uh, has understood it. And not only those who are the victims, but now the common goods issue is on the agenda because also an important segment of the dominant powers have become aware of this. What was the position of, uh, 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 of uh, glob uh, global commons and uh, particularly common goods in the Marx thought? We can say that there is no specific, detailed reference to the common goods. Marx was in a time where the most important critical issue was how to stop the hegemonic power acquired by capital in comparison to the other uh, forces, in particular labor. And this is why the problem for Marx, as of still today after what I said, a, a remains is the fight against appropriation of uh, everything uh, by capital. And this is why uh, uh, the, the thought many, in many occasions also, yes, made a reference to community, 
community of means uh, made a reference to the ancient uh, archaic traditional uh, common or property etc analyze the he analyzed also the community utopian communities with some uh, positive comments etc but was not his problem and it's important to recognize it. There is no criticism. Uh, 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 it's not a critique of the pertinence of uh, his analysis, uh, his time. On the contrary, is uh, 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 an underlying you know, the fact that the Marx worked on historical facts that were very critical at that, that time. And that time, the critical uh, issue was fight against the private appropriation of all means of production. And today, uh, uh, Marxists and uh, communist practitioners, politicians, researchers, uh, uh, trade unionists, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the common goods uh, issue, have a shift from, uh, let's say, a monolithic uh, position of uh, saying the problem is to fight against uh, private property to a position more soft and uh, to a certain extent uh, closer to a, 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 a kind of libertarian conception of uh, uh, today capitalist system. I have no time to develop this uh, statement but I, I, I would just suggest to uh, see how uh, uh, Marxists who consider themselves still as Marxists, like Tony Negri or Michael Hart, that they have uh, uh, come to the conclusion that uh, uh, the difference between private and public ownership with regard to the capacity to transform the world is no longer uh, relevant or determinant. What is determinant for them is uh, uh, the organization uh, in community level, at community level, at local level of uh, the management in common is uh, no longer whether it is uh, public or private ownership. And this is an important change, which personally, by the way, I have some hesitation to adhere to or to accept. But the, as a matter of fact, the largest majorities of uh, Marxists and uh, so-called quotation mark communist or socialist uh, uh, politicians, uh, industrialists, uh, trade unionists, today accept the fact that uh, 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 the most important way to go and the most efficient way to go is the third way beyond the state and beyond the market. And uh, beyond uh, the, uh, the, the dichotomy between uh, private and, uh, and public. The more so that they accept the idea that the public should not limit it to the state public, but also uh, incorporate the concept of uh, non-state public. And they give a certain preference uh, to the uh, responsibility of uh, managing uh, uh, common goods to non-public, uh, excuse me, to non-state public. Uh, uh, subjects. And, and this shift uh, raises a lot of questions. Because if uh, we come back to uh, the first point, commodification, marketization, monetization, privatization, uh, 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 financialization, there is a point which is uh, as, uh, uh, as a quite acquired a fundamental critical importance, is the technologization of life. The technologization of life is leading everybody, almost, to accept the fact that life is a main product, and main industrial product, and main commercial product, and that the nature, uh, the non-industrial process approach, the non-commercial uh, process, approach, etc., uh, 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 are losing relevance. Everything must be evaluated, evaluated, assessed, uh, considered in terms of uh, all industrial and commercial technologized processes. And technology is a product of man. And this is why the, 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 the 
a technologization of life has led also in our milieu a lot of people to accept that if uh, water access or is water itself exceeds themselves knowledge itself is an industrial made commercial made financial determined uh, uh, process they must have a, a financial monetary value they must have uh, uh, governed by a financial monetary mechanism they have to be uh, uh, submitted to the imperatives of the, the larger system efficiency it's not by accident that the technologization of life has led a lot of our leaders and particularly when i was working at the commission european commission uh, the uh, the grand the great mantra of the cultural mantra of uh, our leaders our uh, our responsible people at the european level was uh, resource efficiency everything had to be efficiently managed and uh, resource efficient in europe resource efficient italy resource efficient india resource efficient china have become everywhere uh, the uh, inspiring principle of uh, selecting priorities for resource management at the world and local level. To, to, to be short on this, technologization uh, has not been governed by us. Technologization has been accepted as a driving forces which cannot govern, be governed. Uh, you must do everything which is technically is possible. This is the technological imperative today. And Marxist and uh, communist leaders, etc., have not been sufficiently equipped and sufficiently convinced to fight against it. This is why I come to my conclusion, because I took too long uh, time uh, of uh, my introduction, uh, uh, to the suggestions and proposals. I think that the most critical point today for our humanity is to liberate ourselves from this dependency from a resource-based driven strategy, a resource efficiency dominated life strategy, but to move towards a liberated life strategy. And to say that our point is life. Life in the global community of life on the earth. Not only of the human beings, not only of our trees, not only of our insects or animals or microorganisms or algorithms, but of the entire global community of life. Life must become again, if it never has been it, uh, again, the driving, inspiring principles of our uh, analysis, of uh, our uh, uh, interpretation, evaluation, of our assessment, of our policies. For these five proposals, and I can come to an end. First, we must fight with energy against the application of the patentability of the living species. If we do not abolish patentability of a living species, uh, I think that we will have a very, very little margin of manoeuvre for change. And this applies second to also uh, the patent on artificial intelligence. Today, the laws of the world, of the future, are those who have the patents. Already more than 20,000 patents on living species are dominant species are dominated by agrofood companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, chemical companies. And the equivalent number of patents are already be given in the field of artificial intelligence. IBM, Google, Microsoft, they are the laws. And we in line of the principle that uh, the future must be open to liberation or liberated man and life, human beings and life, from the domination of the utilitarian interest uh, by capital. I think that we must fight against the patent on living species, the patent on artificial intelligence. The third proposal, therefore, 
is that we must seriously and collectively uh, uh, think how to organize a kind of uh, 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 security council of the public common goods at the global level. Security Council of Life, expressed explicitly uh, based on public common goods, and in particular my proposal is to start with three public common goods at the global level. Water, seeds, knowledge. And we must politically fight for creating an institutionalization process that to preserve the safeguard and care of uh, water, seeds and knowledge as a basis for future change of uh, our life. Fourth, I think that we must uh, fight really against the labor division. Labor is life. And we cannot accept the fact that uh, uh, technology has changed the, the way we produce things, the technology has changed the value of life it's of, uh, and labor and so on. Labor today is still the dividing uh, line between people, pe people, communities, and living species. I think that finally uh, we must uh, also uh, fight for banning war. We must have uh, the boldness of saying that war is the worst thing that can happen to humanity. And we must fight for treaties that uh, establish uh, the um, interdiction of a nuclear and bacteriological arms, production and use. Starting, which is not the easiest way, started from arms trade. And we must fight against the, uh, uh, the we must have for the reduction up to zero of uh, public budget expenditures, expenditures on armament. Sorry to be a bit too long, but you know Italians, when we, then they get uh, the word, uh, never they give back. And uh, I wish you a very nice afternoon, and thanks for your attention. Uh, we are going to ask the public if uh, there are questions. Uh, there's a person there. Can you s give him a microphone and the camera? Can you? Okay. Uh, there's one person that's going to ask you a question or a commentary. Go ahead. Thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Uh, I was wondering if you can speak about the role of the state in uh, f you know, the process of uh, commoning, something that you saw for example, in Venezuela, um, the, the crucial role of the state in funding um, the, the projects of commoning, and sort of this negative uh, role of the state that can potentially be played in that process of commoning. Thank you. Uh, another question? Uh, here. Many thanks for your uh, presentation. I have uh, two questions first. Um, uh, there was an um, uh, idea of Francois Outard, you, I think, know very well, or have known very well, about the uh, common goods of humanity, and I'm wondering how this is related to your ideas. And the second, more concrete, of course, to have a security council for the commons to defend this uh, common, uh, also the commons of the humanity sounds very strong, but what would be behind and how, what would be the entry, the first step into such a direction, how we can secure at the global level um, uh, the comments. Thank you. Uh, someone else? There. Oh, thank you so much for your talk. Um, I'm interested in the management of the common beyond the private property and the state public property. So can you provide a more concrete way of democratic management of the common as a kind of model? Okay. 
If there's no... Ah, here, another question. Uh, just a, a very brief point regarding the management of commons. Uh, Professor Thanks, Ostrom, look there, look there. Professor Ostrom, Professor Ostrom, who got the Nobel Prize, her entire work is dedicated to show that the management of commons is quite feasible without the state intervention, without the private uh, control, by communities' own management, if I've got it rightly. So do you see the possibility of communities coming in to make rules and, and, and manage the co commons? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Professor Petrella, please. Uh, yes. Your replies. Yes, many thanks for your comments. Uh, the, the role of the state, in a, in a Marxist sense, I think that at the end the state should disappear. But as uh, uh, we know, Marx and Engels, this is many uh, at the years of the 1860s, they said, uh, and that that condition of, the, of the, their time, the state was important and essential to govern the transition to the also uh, uh, um, elimination of the state. To come to today, I guess also that the state today is the only major advantage that we have. Of course, I'm talking about a democratic state, a non-corrupt state, a efficient state in the sense of being decentralized, that democracy, it works, participatory democracy works, etc. I'm not talking about uh, the state which is corrupted, dominated by financial interests, etc. Et so uh, uh, today, the state which I have in mind is a strong baluard, there's a strong defense uh, of the, uh, the only one we still have to defend the rights, the concept of uh, the state of rights and the concept of a society based on universal rights. Uh, certainly, uh, the, uh, the state which has become a servant of uh, the uh, capitalist state holders in the world uh, does not help us. And this is why fighting for a, a, a change, a qualitative change of the state role in our societies, building uh, gradually a transformation of the national based nationalistic uh, state that we have today towards a diffuse state from local communities up to the humanity level, and I admit, I recognize that this is very, very difficult to implement in just a few years, but this is the way we have to go. We cannot accept uh, that uh, 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 governing without the government or governing without the state, as now European integration is doing. We have a market without the states. The states are forbidden to intervene in the market issues. Or we have a monetary union without the state. There is a no, no institutionalized state in Europe at the European level uh, that has any say, particularly in the field of monetary policy. The European Central Bank is an independent political organization that has not to respond to any other institution, neither to the European Parliament, nor to the Commission, nor to the Council of the States. We need, if we want to safeguard and protect, simply natural common goods like water, like oceans, like trees, uh, like air, climate, a, 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 a disaster, we need a, an institutionalization of a political subject, which still must follow the, the process of the generation of a political power, which is the state. On the contrary, I come to uh, Ostrom, uh, even though Eleanor Ostrom 
was uh, who received the Nobel Prize for the economy, the only woman who received the Nobel Prize for the economy, just because of her research on uh, the common good, how to manage uh, common uh, goods. Eleanor Ostrom is at the origin of this banalization of the common goods and depolitization of the common goods uh, by starting uh, the, uh, 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 her theories about the fact that if you have uh, a community of people who have a common interest on a common good, what is the best form of management? And she was right in saying that uh, if you have a community of people who consider that that flower or that fish or that land is a common of common interest to them, the, the most efficient uh, way of governing this good is the auto auto regulation, self regulation, is community regulation. But the Ostrom philosophy of community regulations means that there is a, 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 a kind of a minimalist uh, micro institutionalization of the living together according to the common share interest on some goods. Ostrom does not pay any attention to living together at a global level, to living together uh, with different cultures for different, for global problems, for global levels. She, considered, she didn't pay attention how to organize global problems. She said, if some fisherman wanted to manage well th that cost area for day fishes, what is the best way to go? Uh, the best way to go is to organize a community, a community of interest. And this is why she developed the thesis that there is no common good by definition. There is no natural common good. There is no common good for the human rights. There exist common goods only if there are appropriators. There are people who say this is our common good. And this is, I accept that it is a very good way to go at the local level for some specific goods. We are talking here about the, the right to life of a billion, billion people. We are not talking here about how to have a resource efficient use of fish capture in a particular region of Chile. We are talking here how we save and safeguard the reproduction of life at the lo at local, national and world level. And this is why the state today, in this phase, of change is absolutely important. And we cannot, uh, uh, Eleanor Ostrom, also she started from the idea beyond the state and beyond market. And de facto, she, is, she has produced a lot of evidence of being at the local level for local management beyond the state, but she has produced a lot of evidence that at the local level you cannot go against the market. Eleanor Alstom does not change at all any view about the role of the market at global level. In her system of self-government of communities, sharing the means of production, there is no, no, no questioning of uh, the uh, marketization. There is no questioning of commodification. There is no questioning of uh, uh, monetization of uh, life. There is no question of uh, privatization. Professor Thanks. Petrella, uh, sorry, can you sorry, sorry, wrap I, up? I stop, I stop, uh, we I have stop. to finish, uh, take two process. minutes uh, to yes. finish, please. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, I was excited by the, uh, uh, the issue. And I think how uh, Francois Outard and I, we had a long uh, common sharing of views. Uh, he also, Francois, noticed in, uh, in several occasions that his uh, uh, interest uh, to the global common good of humanity was uh, based also on my research on uh, humanity and the last my book of three years ago on the name of uh, uh, mankind. I'm sorry again and thanks for your attention. You have been very nice and polite. Thanks. Thank you very much, Professor Petrella. It was a pleasure to hear you and uh, the announcers will uh, tell us here what follows and 
Uh, see you Many next. Many thanks. Many thanks. Thank Have you so nice much, time. Professor Pachella, and thank you, Professor Boltzmann. Oh, yeah, we can show him the memento. Ah. Uh, Professor Petrella, uh, this, I hope you can see it, uh, is going yes, to be see. sent to you, so you can have Great. it, because all speakers in this important conference receive this ma marvelous portrait of Marx with the uh, famous phrase, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. So let's change the world together, <laughs> Professor Petrella. I think that we need it. We need